Bardy Drawn Boy, Born Again on XFM 104.9. Here we are then, Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Raring to go. He's a bit grumpy, Carl. Woken up at Because eight he's from the north. Yeah, 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 because he's in London. <laughs> yeah. And London's rubbish, right, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Where can you- you can't even get a band-aid in London, can you? Or grouting. <laughs> in Manchester, I could walk to the next shop and definitely get- get some Flash, or maybe some Vim. You can't get it down there. You gotta go to a trendy bistro, haven't you? Carl, why are you grumpy? I told you before, I'm just a little bit tired today. Cause he had to get up, but the builders next door woke him up. No, He's always going about his hours. Those builders probably got up at six. Yeah, but to get I can understand I builders who, who get up early because they're building outside and they've got to get the job done before it gets dark, but he's working in someone's lounge. If it gets dark, put the light on. It's not- it's not a problem. So why is he starting work at like seven o'clock in the morning? Well, because the builders get paid by the day, and if you get a builder there and go, I'll just do eleven till three, he's not gonna go, I'll tell you what, love, just give me a- just give me forty quid. I didn't do a whole day. It's a day's work, isn't it? So you want to get the most out of them, don't you? Plus, he probably wants to finish early so he can have a good night out. Yeah, it's a Saturday night, you know what I mean? He wants to- Yeah, he right. wants to get at least fifteen it, pints in. And he was cheery, I bet he was whistling and, you know, dancing yeah, yeah, around dancing and tapping to, to, you know, so I don't know why- how you can be annoyed at that. Yeah, it's, it's why don't you get earplugs? I don't like it, the idea of earplugs. Why? Because I live in a flat, so it's not as if I'm looking after my house, right? I'd I know- out Already? Already? I've lost you. No. That wasn't even a whole sentence and I don't know what you're talking about. No, but what I mean is- What? If you live in a house, right, you know that you've turned the lights off downstairs, you know you've- you've- you haven't got a frying pan on, right? Right, so, okay, not really. Keep, 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 keep going. But I live in a flat, and I don't know what the other people are like, there might be some daft people in there who-, who God, don't, imagine that. Right, who don't turn stuff off. Now if I have earplugs and the fire alarm's going off, yeah. I'm not gonna hear it, I'm gonna have a good sleep, but who knows what could happen. So <sighs> I don't- I don't like earplugs, it's not- it's not safe. Okay. If you live in a block of flats. But I think you'll find, because I've used them, I think you'll find that a fire alarm will cut through I the I wear earplugs. them sometimes, uh, if it's it, it noisy or I want to go to bed early or something, and I hear my alarm clock and it's- it's- it is- it goes- beep 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 It's All that right. loud. Okay. Well, and a, a fire alarm is deafening. Alright, so we've talked in the past about snails who sleep for thirteen years. No, you have. That's never been confirmed. In fact, the expert didn't- hadn't heard of it. D well, they do. Okay. I've, I read it on different sites. Okay. okay. So how much does it take to wake them up? <laughs> Got you. What do you mean? <laughs> well, they sleep for thirteen years. Yeah, but it's probably. But I don't know what you mean by sleep. It's not the same sort of pattern that we have on a in a mollusk, is it? It's different. What what is sleep? It's it. It's, it's when it's when you're sort of shut down. And but they can estivate. They can actually literally. No, shut but they didn't down, say like, that. They said they sleep. They sleep for thirteen years. <laughs> and if it, I, bet, I, I mean, have you ever had like more than ten hours sleep? Yeah. Feel really groggy. Well, yeah. no, I feel good after ten hours sleep. I feel rough. I just was thinking what a snail would be like. They're like, oh, be even slower than normal. Be even slower than you. <laughs> Play a record. Well, anyway, he met yeah. it. If you know what Earth Carl's talking about, ever. Yeah. Fan. Who's here on XFM 104.9? Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, oh. Carl Pilkington. We've got a lot. We've got a lot to get through, we've got a lot to get through, we've got things like uh, Radiohead to play, we've got Feeder, we've got, you know, Teenage Fan Club, you sure. know. We've got, sure. quite, we've got two new competitions, Steve. Go a on. A great one coming up, a film competition. I'm excited. That's great, and uh, uh, a music-based competition. Is it right we've to say that Rockbusters is no longer? We've still got Rockbusters. We've really? Still, it's hanging yeah, yeah, on yeah, by yeah. the oh, skin well, of its I teeth. I thought we got rid of that. I generally, th I thought we'd all agreed that we got rid of that, right? No. no. I think I think we should do it. I think people like Nobody it. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. It's because he got his name in Heat. Now it's, it's no, Ricky Gervais, honestly, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington, and Heat said they like Rockbusters. That's why. Carl, he's I thought we had a meeting. And we agreed that it was not going to happen anymore. He's worried about the fans. There's what? a guy here emailed in, he just emailed in three band names, he said I may as well email in now on the off chance these are right because it's such an arbitrary quiz. Yeah. It's essentially a waste of time. The clues are so F complicated. D. Frida Payne. <laughs> that was a classic. That was a classic rock buster, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> when, when when they start getting a bit ridiculous and that and people aren't getting them. Oh. Then we'll- You can't drink that pop now. Shaka Khan. <laughs> no. That was another piece of genius. Well, um, it, it, I think we've already reached that stage, Carl, to be I've truthful, I've only mate. just got in this river, and there's loads of logs. Just in timber lake, you said river. <laughs> lake, you said river. Lake, you said river. Um, <laughs> just few of the highlights of Rockbuster. Can you please promise that this is the last one today? 
Because it's really, I think it's just, it's bringing the show down. Uh, Steve, he can't promise he'll remember the answers today. How can he promise <laughs> what's gonna happen next week? <laughs> I still right. think it's got legs in it. Let's just see how it goes next week. You're not gonna bring it back next week. It's gotta be finished. We've gotta put an end to it. We've gotta give it a sort of final sending okay, off. Okay, let's, let's, let, I'll tell we've you We've gotta smother it, Kyle, for its own I, good. I do, I do wanna trial this new film quiz we've got, cause it's, it, it's, I mean, I'm excited. I think it's the, the best competition we've come up with, to mm. be honest. I mean, Carl, it, you, you agree, don't you? It's, it's all right, yeah. Yeah, um, it's a it's a film-based quiz. Right. Uh, there'll be a we'll, we'll play you a clip from a, a classic film. I can tell you the film we're going to play. It's The Sixth Sense. Right. And there'll be a, a, a question afterwards, and you can win The Sixth Sense on DVD. Yeah, not not the ability to sort of tell when someone's behind you, but just no. the film. You know, you know. Do you believe in sort of like extrasensory sort of perception and stuff, Carl? Ghosts and that. Uh, yeah. Of course uh, you do. Of course you do. Not uh, ghosts, no, the fact that people maybe can sense, uh, you know, b beings. There was a woman in on the Christian's breakfast show, right? Yeah. Blind woman. Right. Uh, clairvoyant. Is that her name? Uh, forgot. But she, she was a bit useless. Um, <laughs> she was a bit right useless. Now, we're, oh, as it, I'm always worried about what's gonna come yeah, out I'm of Carl's mouth. Yeah, I'm worried what you mean. Do you know what I mean? She's a bit rubbish at being a clairvoyant. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I think if you're not that good at something, don't don't go on the radio and do it. Carl, you better leave. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Sorry. Well, she was saying. So like, what was the relevance of her being uh, blind? What was that for? What did you I tell me? I thought it was a bit weird. I think she was using that because the fact that she can't see living people, but she can contact the dead ones. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm when so you, when sorry, this is XFM one no, point nine. Once again, to you. Carl's opinions do not necessarily reflect, reflect those anyone. Of, those of any human beings. Any other person alive today. Sorry, yeah, Carl. So why, why, wh how did she demonstrate her, her clairvoyance? Right, and why was, was it not very convincing? She was sat in the chair you're at, mm -hmm. right? And people called Ooh, up and said, I sense uh, that. Weird. Said, um, they called up and they said, right, uh, can you uh, have a word with me, Gran? Yeah. And uh, she goes, "Yeah, she's dead, isn't she?" And it's like, "Yeah." She goes, "Oh," and everyone's like, "Oh, she knows the stuff." <laughs> it was fifty fifty to be fair. Yeah, and especially with a Gran, because the person sounded about thirty five, so the chances are, yeah, they haven't got a Gran anymore. Yeah. Um, and it was just unless it's like... the fellas from Busted, because they in the year three thousand, it's only they've, they've only got to a great great granddaughter, and that's a thousand years, so presumably. You know, they can live a lot longer. Yeah. I just wasn't convinced anyway. I don't want to diss her because, you know, she came in and she did her stuff and, and if people believe in it, I'm not gonna put it down, but it just was a little you bit You believe in it? You just <laughs> think she didn't have the real power as opposed to it being rubbish? No, whatever. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't know what we're talking about there. So we've got the film thing going <laughs> <right. laughs> I don't know what we were talking the about. <laughs> what were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it, oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Carl, what don't... were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I, I genuinely don't remember. Well, I just, right, Steve, I'm not, I'm not having a go, right? Um, just saying our people, um, it's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you, right? <laughs> that, that isn't an insult. What were you talking about though? What was it, why did it- It was the fact that people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's, it's like- you know, they they were they should they should wear glasses. I okay. W why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even if it wasn't no, intended as one. It wasn't. It, it sounds wasn't. like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does. Yeah. No, it wasn't. I should be allowed to punch you every time you insult me, though. No, but I'm not. Oh, I'm doing go. it. I'm going to give you a dead arm. Look, Steve. It's it's you, like an you, even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. Well, what you? <laughs> Oh, that was real. Play a record. Yeah. But it's mad. Yeah, from That's now. mad. Oh, is this the cardigans? Great, brilliant. I didn't yeah. even say anything. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. I can enjoy the rest of the show. Cardigans, and for what it's worth, uh, in my opinion, one of the best things I've done for many a year. It's XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Cayman Pilkington. <laughs> I sometimes wish you spoke like that for real, because <laughs> I, I wouldn't leave the studio with a headache then. <laughs> there you are, see? It's just come stinging back. <laughs> oh, dear. A lot of people sort of, I meet people in the street, they go, I wish I was Ricky Gervais's mate. No, you don't. 
<laughs> Let me put your mind at rest now. You're not missing anything. Am I right, Carl? Who says that walking along the street? <laughs> no, people with that element said. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh, just thinking. Oh, what's wrong with Ricky mate? Well, no, I've, I've met people that are friends of friends. Oh, he must be fun to be yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. in, in, in an enclosed space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In an echoey small oh, space. Oh, imagine sharing a prison cell with Ricky. <laughs> oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it, Carl? <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. Well, I'd be the daddy, wouldn't I? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> the suicide rate in the prison would shoot through the roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now come over here and suck mummy's- now listen. What right. do you reckon, Carl, to, uh, you know, being Ricky's friend? Did you find that an exhilarating experience, something that you enjoyed looking forward to? It, it's alright for about an hour, and then anything over that is when he's just messing about and he wants to hit me on the head with a tray. We or, went- uh, we uh, went for lunch yesterday, didn't we? That was more than an hour, wasn't it? Yeah. And we had a drink in the week, didn't we? That was more than an hour, wasn't it? That was- that was a good- Is day. he okay when he's- when it's just the two of you? Cos I find as soon as there's a third person- Well, yeah, just to give he you- He just starts showing off. Well, there's a little bit of that, right, but- I went out with Ricky, like you said, right, for a drink in a week, and uh, you know, I went home, and Suzanne, my girlfriend, said, uh, "Where have you been?" I said, I've "Been out for a drink with Ricky." Hey, you've been out for a while. What have you been talking about? I'm fr I so sort of sat there for a minute and thought, "There's nothing that I can tell her we've been talking about that she'll show any interest in." <laughs> she said, "Well, you must remember something." I said, "I can't. I can't." She goes, "No, something. Just anything that you're talking about. What are you talking about?" I said, "Right." The one I remember, one of the topics that came up was, imagine that the only way to have a kid was you had to sleep with a squid. <laughs> How many kids would you have? I would say it was the future and the squid's like, you know, but the only way they could do it now is like a filter, you had to sleep with a squid, I was going, would you? He's going, what do you mean? I was going, would you? He said, there's not a time he hasn't gone home with a conversation it, it, buzzing in his head that he got confused about. Would anyone want a kid that much? <laughs> Does, does the child look like a squid when you have it, or is no, it like a No, it's not. I was going, no, no, it's, it's normal, but it's like a filter with a system. The only way you can do it to make sure, you know, you have to, imp you know, you have to impregnate the squid and it's a filter and then you can, you know, test tube baby in the future. Did the busted it lads mention that in the time <laughs> <of your> three <laughs> did, but he did live underwater, that's yeah, where I got it yeah. from. I said, well, you probably sort of like get quite friendly with them, but eventually you probably would be breeding with the squids and, you know, So what does, prawns. what does Suzanne make of Javex? Has she met him a few times? Yeah, she just said, oh, she can understand why we sort of get on, because we both <laughs> sort of come up with daft stuff all the time, and... Yeah. But I'm quite happy to have a discussion. I love the way that it, it talks about his partner like the adult. Well, I, like well, we're the two kids that go out playing that's talking how, about squids. That is exactly how I see Suzanne. <laughs> it's like if, if she wasn't there, I don't think you'd get out of the house in the morning. Well, she's, she's you'd have tied your shoelaces together. Yeah, you'd have your earplugs <laughs> in. You'd have forgotten to put your trousers the on. The fire alarm would be going off, and you know someone would left a frying pan on. The builders would be sort of like throwing you round. Yeah, I imagine and she makes you like a round of down. sandwiches. <laughs> well, she, she's noticed that I don't ask as many questions now. Cos, like, last night was one of the first times in ages that I'd asked her something, right? What did you ask? Where's the bathroom? <laughs> no, right, do you know, like, I'm always thinking stuff when I'm bored, right, <laughs> if, it's, if it's when I'm washing up or what have you. Yeah. And, uh, last night, um, she was watching, uh, that Midsummer. Uh, Midsummer Murders, Midsummer yeah. Murders, right, yeah. I don't like it, I think it's rubbish, right? So, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Another uh, thing you've got in common, then. <laughs> no, but, do you know what I mean? I, but I let her watch it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She really likes he it. He was so. standing, he's watching the microwave, she was going, Carl, no, <laughs> yeah, exactly. this is the telly. This is the telly. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, this chicken, this chicken's it's, gonna come I've around I've seen this second. before, this movie before, it comes around again in a minute. <laughs> Carl, come, that's the, what's the washing machine, Carl? <laughs> so she's watching it, loving it and that, and I'm, I'm bored, cos it's just, yeah, it's a boring programme. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm sort of looking through magazines that we've got. Trying to find animals without heads. And, yeah. uh, it was in one of her magazines, and there's this article, right, about these I identical twins, <laughs> brothers, right, and one of them meets this girl, right, and it turns out she's got an identical... I've heard this, this is true. Right. They get married. She's got an identical sister. Right. So, they both go out. So two identical twins, male going out, going out with two identical twins, sisters. Yeah. yeah. So I was looking at it going, oh, that's- that's weird, cos you see them like, they're always wearing the same cardigans and that, and that's like- But then- that's No, right. but if you were a identical twin, then you probably would fancy the same sort of person, wouldn't but you? But, then, I was asking, she was going, shh, it's getting near the, you know, the plot, the murderer. <laughs> if they had a kid, would they look the same? Yeah. Would the, would- the, would- Well, not necessarily, not necessarily, because- it- it depends on what- what genes are passed over. Even though they've got the same exact sets of genes, that, that you don't pass on all the genes, do you? you it's 50-50, but you don't pass on exactly the same genes in each sperm, let alone with an identical twin. 
Yeah, but even though you don't do that, like my brother and sister don't look like me, but no. you know they were related. Because they share they share fifty percent of your and father's they talk genes. Gobbledygook. Yeah, no, you share fifty percent of your father's genes and fifty percent of your mother's, but not the same fifty percent on two occasions. I think you completely. I've lost, you lost already. it. When, lost you brought, when you brought in the word genes, yeah, I yeah. thought you were thinking yeah. what what No, they wouldn't necessarily. For? They wouldn't necessarily know. They could do by. Did a Suzanne sheer chance. look at you? <laughs> Like Oliver Hardy looks at Stan Laurel when he's just like nailed his hand to a wall or something. She just she, she went ask Ricky tomorrow. Um, yeah, and then, <laughs> and then turned up John Nettles. And then turned it up. Yeah. Oh, oh, that is brilliant. I think there's a. St I heard a story once where two um, sets of Siamese twins married. What if you fancied the one on the left? Yeah. What if one of them was having an affair <laughs> behind the other one's back? Yeah, yeah. That'd God. be difficult to conduct, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you better show what off, you he's waking up. What are you doing? What are you hey? doing? What are you nothing, doing down nothing. there? What are you doing down there? Nothing, there's no one down here. Well, well, I'll, well, well I think there is, because I can- I no. can see her sister here. <laughs> no. What's no. she doing? What's she doing? No, just... She's covering for him. What are you covering for him for? <laughs> he's your husband. <laughs> is my wife down there? I read something about some Siamese twins. Go on. And, um, <laughs> one of them was saying, you know, oh, we get on each other's nerves and that. <laughs> um, <laughs> But the other one was going, we don't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know this. I ne yeah, I've never and, liked you. I've never liked them, you. One of them was going, oh, you know, I hate doing the washing up, but I'll let her do it. And, um, the, the person doing the interview said, well, why don't you help out? Just dry up and get the job done quicker. And she was like, no, no, I, I can't stand it. I prefer just to hang around there and wait for the, for the other girl yeah. to do the washing up on her own rather than help and get the job done. Sure. Just selfish. <laughs> Well, I, uh, there was one set of Siamese twins. One, one had a job, and the other one didn't. <laughs> That's ludicrous. Yeah, the other one was unemployed. The other one had a job. She had to go to work. She had to get up at six o'clock on a day I'm off. I'm supporting you, literally. <laughs> yeah. Then they get done off the social for sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the other one was signing on. <laughs> uh, are you living together? <laughs> we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> Feeder, just the way I'm feeling on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve and Carl. Right. Just having a having a whale of a time, both of them. They they love being in this room with me for two hours. They, that is their favourite part of the week, I think, isn't it? That's, I, I, don't, I haven't said that, but I'm assuming they love it. Um, right, competition time. Brand new competition we've come up with. Uh, my favourite we've ever done, I'll be honest. Um, and a great prize, the six cents. You get a you get a clip of a great film, and then you get to keep the great film. Now, I'll just explain this competition. Um, I think Carl is a little bit of a frustrated actor, and so, by the power of technology, Carl takes the role in a film, um, and, uh, there's a question about it afterwards. Um, this is, uh, a scene starring Carl Pilkington from The Sixth Sense. Jeez, I hope nobody got hurt. Hey, all right? You're very quiet. I'm just just thinking about stuff. So. You're mad at Mr. Play, aren't you? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. Uh, went down a storm playing the drums in Little Donkey, but. Your loss. I'd give anything to have been there. Well, you wouldn't, because you didn't. But, like I say, it's your loss, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just quiet because I'm thinking about stuff, like I said. Right? I'll make a big deal out of it. What is it? Well, uh, I was just thinking, what would happen, right, if you put a chameleon on a mirror? How, how would it handle that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, you're scaring me. That's scaring you. This'll scare you, right? The other day, so two old men sat there having a Twix. You never see that, do you? Old fella having a Twix. You see ghosts, Cole? No, just... Just... Just the old fellas having a Twix, but... They... They talk to you? 
No. They tell you to do things? No, because they were too busy eating, but... What's that got to do? What are you looking like that for? Do you, do you think I'm some sort of freak or something? Is that, is that... I would never think that about well, you. Well, Ever. No. Got it? All right. Well... Well, anyway, it's a very <laughs> chilling scene, that. That is great. Oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> it's a very spooky scene from the film The Sixth Sense. Rick, yeah. I think you've got a question. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Carl played it wonderfully there, the role of the, uh, the child that sees weird stuff. But who played the original role? What was the name of the child actor who played the original role? It's email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win a copy of The Sixth Sense. But I think we can, we can probably play it again later for those that missed it or those yeah, that haven't got the time or those that need another one. reminder. Yeah, you got to, yeah, get, get, get your, you know, it's 15, 20 minutes. Get your, um, answers in. We'll, we'll pick a lucky winner and then, uh, we'll play it again. Because I just, I think that we can, I think Carl can go to Hollywood with some of the things I've seen there. Mm. Absolutely okay. stunning. Absolutely Brilliant. stunning. Ricky at xfm.co.uk. Um, I'm gonna play uh, a track now. We tried to play it a couple of weeks ago, but the jump, so I got a new CD of it. It's Papa Garcia, and this is La Natalie and Nusi. <laughs> Natalie and Nusi by Papa Garcia. Um, well, we've had lots of emails already. Uh, in fact, my favourite one is a suggestion of the name of that feature, specific to this today's, is the Twix Sense. Indeed. Which uh, was great. And feel free to send in your suggestions, because we're going to try and do one a week, a classic film, with Carl in the, in the, you know, an important role. But if you want to, you know, see Carl as maybe as, uh, you know, Michael Corleone in The Godfather, so, you know, send in, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do, won't we, Carl? And don't don't imagine that it has to be a, a male character. I imagine that you could play, for instance, Sharon Stone's role in uh, Basic Instinct. I don't imagine it has to be a human. I mean, I'm a, 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 I mean, an animal. He might, object. Be, he might be better suited. He'd be very good as a rock, yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah, um, but um, we're going to uh, pick up something we we spoke about before. Um, we're going to announce the winner and play that again um, in in a few minutes. But um, uh, Carl wants to put the record straight, don't you? Carl's fed up with when he comes up with something that's a bit a little bit fantastic and far fetched and wrong. That we take the mickey out of him, so uh, he's brought in some hard evidence of the story, haven't you? No, do you know, like, I find stuff on the internet and that, mm. right? And I come in and tell you about it, and you go, that's rubbish. Yeah. And then you'll say, show your workings, mm. which I've never liked doing. No. When teachers say that, I hate that. Yeah. Because I normally can't. <laughs> no. No. I've always gone. He's, he's just got the answers five, and I go, no, I asked for the capital of China. <laughs> yeah. The answer's five. <laughs> yeah. But, right, so we started a feature a couple of weeks ago, um, Chimpanzee, that the thing about monkeys and stuff. Let's yes. do the just play the jingle right. Oh, chimpanzee, that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right, we started that. That's facts about apes, isn't it? And yeah, monkeys, monkeys, chimps, chimps yeah. whatever. Yeah. And um, I told you a story about um, a monkey that was in a zoo. Yeah. And um, it it got pally with the zookeeper. Right. Yes. Remember? It moved into his house, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, and didn't it ultimately have an affair with his wife. Yeah. It liked a little uh, brandy at night and a cup of tea in the morning. Then he went to work and it moved in on its wife. Yeah. Right. Now I read that in a book. Yes. Right. But then I was looking for some more monkey stuff online the other day, mm. and I found the same story. Right. From a different source. Okay. Which is always a good sign. And it's corroborated what you claimed, is it? Kind of. There you go. It's not a different source, though, is it? It's someone who read the same thing as you and printed it's, it themselves. Out, I left out a fact. His name's Oliver. <laughs> what, the monkey? So I got that wrong, yeah. The monkey's called Oliver. Can you see that, Steve? Oh, yes. Right? There's a picture wanna, of him here. Do you want to read it? Now, do you, do you, where is this from, then? Well, I, I, was, you... I was looking for World Famous Monkeys online, and it... www.apernaut.org <laughs> <laughs> this is someone who, in America, is it, who set up a, a sort of similar website to, uh... I don't know uh, where he is, but... Yeah. Okay, uh, he was originally brought into the US with 12 other chimpanzees, but immediately stood out as different. He learned to drink, enjoy coffee and beer, and smoke cigars. <laughs> in the evenings, he would sit on a sofa and watch television. If his caregivers were out of coffee, he would walk into the kitchen, pour a cup, and take it into the den. As he got older, he made sexual advances on the wife, and as a result was sold. I reckon it was a, a stowaway. And to, to to not get caught, he pretended to be a monkey. Yeah. Whereas really, it was just a. That would make fella. sense because the final line is he's now living in retirement in Texas. <laughs> yeah. But I, I get the, my only query, and I don't mean to be disrespective, is that 
it doesn't really give much more information. I mean, I, I mean, someone who's set up a, a website like this, I'm worried that what I'm saying is I'm worried he's just kind of an American twin of you. Do you know what I mean? Do you see what I mean by that? There's no real hard evidence. There's no kind of dates. There's no uh, references to where where he was specifically or what you zoo he was in. Carl Pilkinghorn. <laughs> yes. From Dallas. Hi. <laughs> We're cousins. Why do you need to know all that? The story's What there. do you mean, why does he need to know that? Why, why not accept it? Because another fella reckons a chimp moved in on a, a, someone's wife. What I'm saying is, th th he could be as he could be as much of a nutter as you. Do you see what I mean? I th what, what do you mean? Could be, he is? Yeah, exactly. What and go to that much trouble of like yes. sorting out a website and that? You host a radio show for goodness sake to spout your idiocy. You see, he was a website. You know, anything. He you was stressed. Job. He was stressed yesterday because we want to do uh, another chimpanzee. That have we got a new story coming up for chimpanzee? That yeah. he was stressed yesterday because he's he said I'm really overworked. I'm really getting fed up. He said he said I haven't even um, sorted out the story. Um, about, uh, this monkey. He said, how overworked am I that I, I haven't even got time to sort out a story about a monkey? <laughs> you know how much I love that. Rick, do you think there's any way we could lure Oliver out of retirement to come over and produce this show? I think we probably could. <laughs> I'm uh, parched for a cup of coffee. Would you pop to the kitchen? We're gonna play a bit of Springsteen. Oh, I love it. For Martin Freeman, he said, please play the Twix sense there. Um... To be fair as well, Rick, there is a question that is answerable. I think that's so also a reason why people yeah. It, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, that's because I did it and not Carl, probably. Exactly. I asked the question there. Yeah. Um, we're gonna play it again, because other people want to hear it again, and, uh, then we will, uh, give the winner's name, and they will win that copy of it. Carl, in the sixth sense. Hmm. Jeez, I hope nobody got hurt. Be all right. You're very quiet. No, I'm just just thinking about stuff. So. You're mad at Mr. Play, aren't you? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. Uh, went down a storm playing the drums in Little Donkey, but your loss. I'd give anything to have been there. Well, you wouldn't, because you didn't, but, like I say, it's your loss, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just quiet because I'm thinking about stuff, like I said, right? I'll make a big deal out of it. What is it? Well, I, uh, I was just thinking, what would happen, right, if you put a chameleon on a mirror? How, how would it handle that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, you're scaring me. That's scaring you. This'll scare you, right? The other day, so two old men sat there having a Twix. You never see that, yeah, old fella, having a Twix. You see ghosts, Cole? No, just, just, just the old fellas having a Twix. But uh, they, they talk to you? No. They tell you to do things? No, because they were too busy eating. But what's that got to do? What are you looking like that for? Do you, do you think I'm some sort of freak or something? Is that, is that... I would never think that about well, you. Well, just, ever. Just, no. Got it. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. And so the question was, uh, who played the original role of that kid in the car who saw strange things? And the answer is Steve. Haley Joel Osment, of course, yeah. uh, who um, is a talented young performer, but I don't think really has anything on Carl Pilkington, who I think made that scene even more chilling and yeah. more uh, atmospheric than the definitely, original. Definitely, definitely. And uh, we'll give this to, let's see, I think it's uh, Francis Marnie, who's emailed in. Uh, he or she said, I don't know if it's a he or she, but uh, says I that is, basically- I is male and, and he is- No, oh, well, I, think it's I is female and it, Francis or Fran- I Francis, don't know, anyway, do I? That could be a fake name, who knows. But uh, he, let's assume it's a he, he says he's a sad little nerd. Who, um, it was, it was his birthday yesterday and only his mum remembered, even his best friend forgot. Definitely a, definitely um, a bloke. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, uh, I can't really relate to life as a bit of a loser, a bit of a no. nerd, so I don't really know what he's talking about, but I imagine a lot of our audience do, so let's give it to him and sort of- I imagine, he's, I imagine he's a little four-eyed geek. <laughs> oh, little loser. Geek. Little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, as I look again, I notice he's not even got the name right, he's spelled it Hayley Joel Osman. Oh. This is Osman, but, um, so he really is pathetic, I mean, that's, what a pathetic Actually, little Actually, well, totally fun now, now we've humiliated him, don't give him the prize, give okay. it to someone else. Well, it's on TV tonight anyway, on ITV, no, so- No, no, well just done, Francis. Thank you for uh, listening, and uh, well done for spotting who Carl was trying to 
and whatever girl you fancy at school, ask her out. Say, come back to my place, watch The Sixth Sense. Yeah. She'll love it, and you'll be guaranteed a shame. Why do you assume he was at school? I don't know, because his, his spelling is terrible. Although I'm looking at Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's just a very badly put together email, I just assumed it was a kid. Right. Well, if he yeah. is a kid now, and he's going through four white views, he's probably really- I never dreamt it was a kid. I'm, really? I feel a bit bad now. Well, you thought it was a sort of 25-year-old loser, yeah. even more pathetic in a way. Yeah. And now I'm worried <laughs> yeah. that, you know, you've- you've, uh, you've embarrassed, a, you know, a, a, an adolescent mm. live on, well, one of the biggest radio stations in the- Building. <laughs> it's not even. It's not even the biggest radio station in the building. <laughs> I true. can't believe that. It's the smallest radio station in this building. Right now we've done that. Right, are we doing a proper competition? Yeah. Setting up the old uh, rockbusters. Rock your favourite. Yeah. Well, you let's play a tune before. I can't. I don't think I can face that. Well, straight it's just away. That we've also we've also got that song sounds all right. Aren't we? Uh, yeah. Another new feature. That, sound, that song sounds good. Can I just say before we play a record that uh, we've had an email from Dickie Anderson. Dickers! <laughs> Richard oh, Anderson. Oh, Dickster, you Dicky Ducky Dido, <laughs> are ya? If you're a new uh, listener, then you won't have uh, come across Richard before, but, but he loves he's, the our, show. he's our biggest fan. He's a bit of a and he loves the show. He taped it and listens back to it four or five times. But he the great thing about him is he's not afraid to offer a bit of constructive criticism. Oh, well! What's he said? What's he well, said? Well, uh, all I'm going to say to you is he said, um, is it true that companies are now getting rid of hold music <laughs> and are instead using your show to irritate their customers while they're waiting on the phone? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, we'll try and we'll look into that, Dickie, but thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> I need direction. Teenage Fan Club on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Do keep your suggestions coming in for uh, roles that you'd like to see Carl playing in future editions of this that is, quiz. This is the most popular comedy we've ever done. Has it got a name yet? Have we come up with a name? Uh, Holly Wouldn't. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, anyway, we had some suggestions. Um, <laughs> Neil Wilson in Bedford, he suggested he'd like to see you, Carl, playing the role of Clyde the Monkey in <laughs> yeah. uh, Every Which Way But Lose. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, and uh, also an excellent suggestion from Lee Gridley in Essex. The obvious role for you is, of course, Dustin Hoffman as Rain Man. I, I said that, didn't I? That's perfect. That'd, That'd be like, great. Yeah. Just imagine going, okay, you remember? Bet two for t yeah. good. Remember? Yeah. Well, you've lost again. Yeah. It'd, that'd be fantastic. I'm worried that you- I don't know, it's a bit of a stretch, Carl. Can you play someone who's that clever? <laughs> Give it a go. Yeah. I want to do Elephant Man. <laughs> okay. Why, what sort of ideas you got for Elephant Man? Well, I don't know whether I'd be him or, like, the Doctor. Mm. What would you say if you were the Doctor? Just like, uh, oh, how do you do that? You know what I mean? How do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can I, can I hear it? Have you seen your head? <laughs> <laughs> or he goes, I'm not an animal, and you go, wow. <laughs> it's 50 -50. Judging by your head, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Forrest Gump. Yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. It's loads, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll keep them going in. That's brilliant. So, uh... The competitions don't stop there, sadly. Yeah. No. Rockbusters. Oh, God. <laughs> right, how about, right, we've got this other, other thing, right, this other music thing. Yeah. How about we make that part of How it? How many competitions have you got? No, well, this is what I'm thinking, right? Because we can- if you- if you're not happy with Rockbusters, if we add a little bit to it, and they love the bit I've added, then we can slowly fade it out without them knowing. That's it. Do two of your Rockbusters and- th and one of these. Right. Are these Come the on prizes, Carl? They're the prizes. Well, let's do the prizes. Let's quickly go through them then. Yeah. Alright, what we got here? Let's speed this up, because I'm dropping off now. Yeah, I think it's, like, it's either warm in here, or, or this isn't the most scintillating conversation we've ever had. Okay, first thing, there's a CD here. It's uh, tracks that were sampled by uh, <laughs> various artists, including Jay-Z, Happy Mondays, and so on. It's the original versions. That might mm. be quite good fun. Sure. I Love You, we see it's a number of love songs. Yeah. You've got uh, Blue featuring Elton John on there. Yeah. Chicago, yeah. Nat King Cole, yeah. some great sound, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Retro Dance Masters, oh, yeah. that's another CD. Dance tracks, yeah. obviously, on there. Oh, it's still knocking about the best. Air Guitar Volume 2. Sure. Rubbish. Uh, this is quite good though. It's Paul Whitehouse's uh, TV show Happiness. That's the first series on DVD. Uh, we've also got Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince. You can have that in your collection. Probably never watch it, but it might look like you're slightly classy and arty. And so uh, the subtitles. <laughs> the best one hit wonders album in the world ever. You've got stuff on there like uh, Nana, 99 Red Balloons, yeah. and uh, M's Pop Music. So not oh, that yeah. bad a selection actually this week. He's cut out some of the chaff. Right. Yeah, okay. Sorry, right, here we right. go. Rockbusters. Rockbusters, first one. Uh, we'll do two of these and I'll play something in a minute. Right, uh, first one. Um, the Australian picks two blokes. What? 
The Australian picks two blokes. The Australian picks two blokes. The initial? Yeah, the initial E, right? And the second one, that builder's a bit- I've got that already. It's annoying. <laughs> okay. That- that builder is a bit cute. He's a bit cute? Yeah. Alright. And that's B T. B T. B T. That builder's a bit cute. Yeah. And the Australian picks two blokes E. And then what I'm gonna do now is play some sound effects that make up a song and you've got to guess what the song is. Go on then, right? just do it and then the show on the Here we go, here we go. <laughs> There you go. So what song's that? It's yeah. sort of an XFM type okay, song, that's great. Email so, so only. First, so I should just clarify, though, the first two are, uh, band names or artist names, but that's the title of the track that we want there. Yeah, that's okay. right. It's that's so right. confusing. No one's ever gonna figure this out. They will, though. They will. They'll do it. Ricky.Gervais at XFM. Hey, listen, we've got the best fans in the world, Steve. <laughs> Remember that. Remember that. <laughs> Without them, we ain't nothing. Yeah. So, good luck to you. <laughs> Do you want to pick a track, Steve? Uh, I'd love to. I want to wear some monkey magic. I want to wear some chimpanzee that. I want to wear some aping around. <laughs> we've got that still to come. Not oh, I can't it. believe it. We've got Rockbusters. <laughs> that film sounds good. And we've got, oh, look at him up in Hollywood. -ant. And we've got, like, oh, monkey me, monkey you. we got Gibbon on the horn. <laughs> Jesse Maiden, this is a great track. Coldplay, Clocks on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, give me some monkey magic, Carl. Hang on, you better do the jingle, aren't you? Oh. Oh, chimpanzee that! Oh, you'll like this one. Um, what I've found is, uh, found out like a lot of monkeys' names, like that's how I found out about Oliver. Yeah. What do you mean no. you found out a lot of monkeys' names? Well, there's uh a lot of monkeys out there. And you think they're just called monkey and what have you, but they're all given names, right? So this this one that I found about, bit of a weird name anyway. It's actually called Crap, its name, right? And so it, they're, they're they're not born with those names. It's not like their parents give them those names. You know, they're just yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But this one, right? And um, it's called Crap. Yeah, I know. Right, but do you know what it's famous for? What crap? Yeah. No one. Is it involved with this show? It, um, the first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> yeah, again, I will say not by choice. There is no way that a chimp would go down to Camden Lock and go, uh, are you a registered tattooist? <laughs> I am, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's the cleanest, yeah. Go, okay, um... Can I have a look through your book? Can I have a look through your book? Um, I don't know if it's something quite gothic, but, um, uh, I'd, I'd like, you know... What's your name? Crap. Oh, I'm not sure I can do that because you're not drunk, are you? I have another drink. I have another drink. I've had some, I've had some, uh, umbongo and that's all. <laughs> uh, but no. What are you talking about? The first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> what are you talking about, There's Carl? gotta be more information. Don't tell me you're leaving it there. There's gotta be more information. That was it. And then I read it thinking, well, that's weird because that means there's loads of monkeys with tattoos on their head. If that's the first one. No. It could be still the only one. The first and only. Yeah, but would they report that? Well, I, you what do you mean, would they report it? This isn't the Washington Post you're reading. <laughs> this is mentalists who do websites about themselves every day. Oh, I, 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 what? There's got to be a third Why is that, that news? Story. Why is that news? What, how did you come across that? Well, do you, you First nut monkey with tattoo head, W. I mean, what are you talking about? But why did it have its name tattooed on its head? I don't know. Didn't, it didn't say, it didn't say that. I, I mean, I, yeah, I know, it's mad. But, <laughs> but it didn't say why. Was that enough for you, though? Did you feel satisfied having read that? Did you not have other I questions? I mean, there's no way that that is in the Guinness Book of Records. There's no way uh, that that is uh, excited in the Guinness Book of Records. I just read it as like, what a weird name for a monkey. And then, <laughs> ooh, you won't have that on your head. What and, would be a good name for a monkey? I don't know, uh... Anything but that, really. Yeah. Uh, Dave. Ted. <laughs> but what do you think of that then? Well, I don't know what to think about it because I don't know what I don't know what you're telling me. I don't know. I don't know that that's news. I don't know that it's true. Mm -hmm. I, I I mean, I don't know where to start with that. Is that all you found? You found a, something about a, no, a I'll monkey. I tell you right. When I was searching for stuff on monkeys, right. Yeah. I was searching around, like I always do, looking, finding information, right? Yeah. And, um, found out, are you aware of the Iceman? 
The Iceman? Yeah. Go on. Right. And to me, the monkey thing was more- What's the Iceman? Oh, the man that was found in the ice. To your own. A Neanderthal man. Right, yeah. Ricky, do you know Not a monkey, the then. No, no, I know, but I just was looking at, like, info. Right. The five thousand year old fella who was preserved in a, in a glacier. That one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you find that more fascinating than the monkey? Well, I, I know that it's true. Yeah, it's true, but do you find it more fascinating? Well, simply <laughs> because it's true I find it more fascinating. I can't act on some- uh, if someone- uh, anything that's true is more fascinating. But, you see, what I get from the monkey thing, yeah. you go, oh, I wonder- wonder if it was happy about that and- <laughs> But you accept it straight away, you accept that that is true and interesting and I don't know what that is. I mean, to me it sounds like a bit of cruelty towards animals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you know, that, 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 uh, uh, I mean, if that's true, it's disgusting to tattoo uh, a monkey's head. It's disgusting. Yeah. Um, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no way, that's what I'm saying, it doesn't do a- if a monkey, if they, if they reported that a monkey um, uh, went in and got a tattoo, <laughs> and chose it itself, and then was uh, riding a Harley Davidson down <laughs> Canberra. I go, that is incredible. But I'd really want to see it on the news, and it mustn't be anywhere near the first of April. You know what I mean? I think you've just blown next week's. Letter to Hermione, David Bowie of Space Oddity album, XFM 104.9. See, do, 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 oh, I don't know where- I, I, I thought you'd sort of learnt a little bit, Carl, what is a, an interesting fact and what might just be a mentalist online. Mm. Do, you, do you know what I mean? Do you know what point we're making here? What, why the truth is so much more fat? Even a little bit- even something that's just, uh, you know, mild but is definitely the truth is so much more interesting that, than- just wish fulfilment of truth. To me, if it starts with there was this ghost, right? It's not interesting. You could say anything. There was this ghost that could turn custard into wine. It doesn't matter. There was this ghost that had nine heads. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There was this <laughs> you know Carl's looking at you going, there's a ghost that can turn custard into wine? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what you say after that. There's a ghost that can uh, uh, swallow alligators whole. The, f the premise means it's not true to me. Do you know what I mean? It's like people say, you know what, uh, God, right, he's incredible, I go, I'll stop you there. It, uh, the fact that he can make the earth in seven days, well, you've lost me already. Do you know what I mean? Where if someone says something like, you know, a cockroach can live five days without a head, that's interesting. That's interesting. Right. Do you think when you die, they say, you're a ghost, this is gonna amaze you. You yeah. can go and you can spook people out. Yeah. Do you like custard? <laughs> Get, Come over no, here. No. Well, if you don't, oh, you don't. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you like wine? Of course I do. <laughs> oh, you are gonna love it. Yeah? You're gonna love me. You are gonna love it. Yeah. I've lost all my loved ones. Yeah. Uh, do, do you see what I mean? It's, it's it's what your sort of beliefs are based on. Mine are sort of on, I suppose, logic and and, and science. And so but what, I'm amazed by the world and and. So the Ice Man, why why does that amaze you? What's what's like? Oh. Well, they, they, they found some uh, part of our preserved past. You know, it's interesting. I, I, you know, I, again, I'm amazed by anthropology and evolution. Yeah. Go it's on. just that, that, that line on its own like that, you know, they found an ice man is great, but then it went on and on and it's going on about, you know, they've had to get different people involved to find out how old, how old it was. Because first of all, the story started off, right, <laughs> an old fellow on holiday somewhere, uh, where did they find it? In Sweden or something? And he was walking in the hills, and he was uh, walking in the hills. In hills? Was he yeah. a transvestite? In the mountains. Oh, right. in the hills. Yeah. Yeah. So he's walking, walking about, and he sees this body in the in the snow, and he thinks, oh. So he calls the calls the police up, and they come and have a look, and he goes, oh yeah, it's probably a murder. So then they di dig it up and find out. He's got hold of a spear in his hand. Right. And he's and he's dressed like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Right. And they realise it's probably not a recent murder. Right. His knuckles are drugging on the floor. <laughs> he's yeah. a Neanderthal man. They yeah. think, hang on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> but when they found out, hang on, it's an old thing. It's an old thing! Can it? If it was a murder recent, then you'd go, hang on, how did this happen? Who does he belong to? Yeah. But the chances are whoever murdered him is also dead. Five thousand years ago, probably, but, uh, yeah. So leave it. Just bury it. <laughs>
I don't think it's a murder investigation. <laughs> no, but they are. It's not Quincy going, this is really, this was before my time. <laughs> it's no, not that, a murder that, investigation. Uh, yeah, just, just one thing bothers me, sir. Um, just one final thing. My wife loves you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> this guy. This that's, guy. That's how they were Why would he it? have a spear <laughs> yeah, yeah. and a leopard skin? <laughs> I, I just can't, I can't get over this. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. But what are you saying? What are you saying? Right, shut up everybody. What are you saying? You've got one chance now. You've got to ask me a question and I will answer it the best way. But what are you saying? I'm what is saying, your question? Right, you probably spent a load of money trying That's not to a question. Out. That's not a question. Yeah, but let me tell you what I'm saying, right? They're probably spending a load of money finding out stuff about this fella who died. And even if, even if he wasn't murdered, he'd be dead by now anyway. So get over it. Right? <laughs> Three thousand years ago, he, he, he died, mm. right? So then they start messing about with it, saying, well, how did he die? Well, it, it doesn't matter. It was, it was ages ago. Then, they start digging his belly open, seeing, uh, last meal that he ate. Yeah. Oh, he, he ate seeds and leaves. Well, no surprise, really. <laughs> there was now else around, again, spending more money. Someone's been paid money to sort that out. Then they bury him. And then said, hang on a minute, are, are you sure that he died by, like, a spear? Let's dig him up again. So they dig him up again and find some splinter or Sorry, something. Sorry, I don't believe they buried him. They did. Well, in some sort of fancy coffin so everyone can see him. But for me, that is more wasteful than sorting out something that's, you know, like someone who's ill. Sort, sort something out, you know, something. Yeah, they, 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 no, sorry, it's not either or. They don't- they didn't pull a doctor out of surgery. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's not an old man in a bed in a yeah. corridor somewhere yeah, going, go, uh, Ted, oh, what are you doing? Stomach. I'm just- I'm just giving this bloke a, a stat clear. <laughs> no, look, we found an old fella in a ski- okay, <laughs> uh, okay, you yeah. take over. It's not either or, Carl. What are you talking about? It's scientific research. But don't you see why this is fascinating? It gives us an insight into how we lived 3,000, 5,000 years ago. That's an incredible historical document. The what seas. if it was your equivalent? What if it was like the card of the time and there's people, uh, you know, ghosts now through that going, oh God, you don't believe, don't, I, I don't believe it, they don't dug up Carl. They think we're all like that. Oh no, don't, oh no, they're going into his brain now. They're looking at how his brain works, we're gonna get such a bad rep. Oh well, dear. Well, each to their own, if you like it, I just thought it was a bit of a... a waste of money. Bit of, bit, a little bit of a waste. Yeah, okay. But, uh, there you go. Anyway, we've, uh... Will we give out the answers to Rockbusters next? If we yeah. must. Yeah. It sometimes stuns me. Mm. Sometimes I, I'm taken aback, do you know what I mean? But what worries me, it, it, what worries me is if one day aliens do visit. I'd love and that. And they come down, yeah. But what worries <laughs> me is they <laughs> might bump in- what if they bump into you? What if they bump into you and they think that you represent mankind? And they, they go are. up and they- they okay. start another planet. They can act- they say, oh. we'll ask you three questions and if you answer them correctly, we will not blow up your planet. Yeah. We'd be doomed. Well, it depends. It depends what they ask you, don't they? What if they said, what if they said, right, Carl, what's the weirdest thing ever found in China? I say, airy Chinese kid. And they go, okay, right. Okay, interesting. Two, all right. What um, don't you see anymore? What do you see an old bloke they're doing? Don't see an old fella e eating a Twix. Yeah. And they say, um, uh, what if they asked you, what's across the road from you when you're washing up? Uh, well, there's a few, three things. Do you just want one of them? No, yeah. I want all three. You want all three? It was a Chinese kid dancing about in his underpants. Yeah. There was a bouncer every yeah. night getting ready to go to work. And the third one, the old woman reading a book, the same book. And they night. go, right, your planet's saved. See, <laughs> see. Back in the ship. <laughs> yeah, they are in superior rates. <laughs> 4.9. Well, moving on, moving on. Answers? Nearly done. Let's play Rockbusters. Alright, um, first one was, um, the Australian picks two blokes. Uh, the initial was E. The answer there, him and him. <laughs> M and M. <laughs> All right. The second one. Um, that builder is a bit cute. The initials there were B T. That was Bonnie Tyler. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we introduced a new bit to the show. Um, that song sounds all right. These were the effects you heard. <laughs> And, uh, that was Prodigy, smack my bitch up. Who are you punching there? And could I just say, no animal was harmed in the taping of that effect. There you go. No. Right, so have you got a winner? Yes, uh, Rob Preston from Croydon, he has got all three correct, and he wins a that selection bag of, of shite. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, so good luck, enjoy that, uh, Rob. Yeah, if you can. Yeah.
sell it. Record and tape exchange within <laughs> 40 minutes of receiving it, I imagine, the one good album that he likes. <laughs> Bob didn't on the tracks for all this bag of shite, please. <laughs> Should we play a record? Absolutely. Um, uh, can I just ask now, what are we thinking with Rockbusters? Are we sticking with this? or Because I really thought we'd cancelled it. What about, what about that format we've just done where there's like two- This is another off-air discussion, I think. Well- I just feel the listeners should be able to contribute. They do. Yeah. They phone and say, the show's rubbish, mm. move on, um, can- can we experiment on Carl? I'm yes. a doctor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, would like to tattoo on would Carl. Would like to tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, Carl, have you got any tattoos? Have you- have you ever thought about that? Any kind of piercings? Don't like the idea. Don't no? mess- don't mess with your body and that. Okay. He doesn't like yeah. the human body, he's scared of it. But I told you, didn't I, about me uncle, oh, Tattoo Stan, we've talked about that, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> tattoo, tattoo Stan, Stan yeah. Yeah, he's- he's got loads. And I, yeah. I think now he sort of, you know, looks in the mirror and thinks, oh, what have I done? Yeah. But then again, so do you. I was telling, life, telling, telling Ricky before about someone who had a tattoo. Uh, it's a bit horrible, really, isn't it? I don't know. I can't remember the t the skin thing. Oh God, yeah. You're not going to tell us it again. I'm, I'm hoping it's not true because it's from Carl, but it's pretty disgusting. But yeah, I'm, I'm, fortunately, because there's no paranormal or animals <laughs> <laughs> acting like humans involved, I think it might be true. It's a fellow who kept his dad's tattoo. Yeah, he just sort of when his dad passed away, he got the skin off and put it in a frame. Who'd you ask to do that? Oh, man alive! Uh, ashes to ashes, dust, sorry, um, before we- Barry, you don't- <laughs> Before we come in, I've got do a Stanley do, knife. Do you do any other services? Like what, my son? I'll just- just pop- pop some of him in a- in a jar for me. I'm sorry? <laughs> Uh, how do you? I mean, that I is. I bought this clip frame from IKEA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just slip yeah. that between. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, oh, that I, is I imagine it. your father is a man who's probably appalled by the idea of tattoos, earrings, things like that. I imagine he's quite an old school gent. He's, he's never sort of said anything, but uh... if you came back with an earring, what would you have said when you were a youngster? I never saw him that much as a kid, so I don't think he'd have noticed. My mum would have said, "What have you done that for?" Yeah. Our kid had a tattoo. And, uh, and, a, and an earring. Sorry, is this the one that took- uh, borrowed a tank from the army to go and get a packet of fags? Yeah, that's Well, there you go. We must tell that story again next week. For yeah. those that are fairly new listeners, that's gotta seem tantalising. Yeah. Your brother once drove a tank down to the local shops to buy some cigarettes. Absolutely true. Yeah. It's an extraordinary story. But that's it. We don't it was that other auntie you told me about in the week. Not auntie Nora, the one that farted for five minutes, but there's another auntie you talked about. How many aunties got, have you got? I haven't really got another auntie. I've got me- me brother. Yeah. Who I haven't seen in ages. Yeah. My sister I hadn't seen for about twelve years, then I saw her again, and then she got fed up because I said Oh, you should have a new kid and you went with all the same. I've seen one, I've seen them all. Yeah. Why are you saying that to your sister? Your sister, you haven't seen her for how long? I hadn't seen her for about twelve years, and then for some reason I met her in a car park in Wales. Right. <laughs> and um <laughs> It's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. And um she got- she got in the back of the car and she said, Oh, I want to show you something, right? And uh, she got this picture out and said, Look at that. And it was one of my new nieces and nephews. It was her, her, her any, daughter, boy or, or her girl. son. Yeah. yeah, or whatever. And uh, she said, "Look at that." And so, and I sort of said, "Well, there's no point showing it me. All babies look the same." Don't there's we? no point in showing it me. It just takes two seconds of your life. You go, "Oh, lovely." Yeah, right. That's all you have to do. If it was a first, yeah. I'd say, "Oh, I'd show a bit of interest, even though." Do you think, I wasn't the, in do you think the novelty wore off for her with the second kid, third kid, <laughs> six kid? I think even she should be bored of looking at pictures of babies. Kind of a woman, is she? And can I get her phone number? <laughs> <laughs> right, is that it then? Play a tune. Have we got- is this it? Is this yeah, it? Have we, it. Have we got to wrap it all yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Go well, on. I forgot to bring in a song for the ladies this week, so I thought I'd play a song for people who enjoy the work of Deep Purple. <laughs> <laughs> that run and run! <laughs> Here's Deep Purple, see you next week. <laughs> Bye! Chilly weather? Why not put on a cardigan? <laughs> that was the cardigans. <laughs> and for what it's worth, a lovely tune there. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a joy. We should definitely talk like that more. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerton, alright? Alright. Yeah? All right. Well, we've got a, a jam packed show today. Go we've on. got, we've got, oh. We've got so many features. We've got more features than Carl's got on his face. <laughs> which, is, which is about the same as Morph. Yeah. Very few. It's just, it's just really a head, isn't it? A little That's where I've seen him before. Morph. On Take Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> um, we've got, uh, Rockbusters, that's, that's Have we? still no, going we strong. feelings on that. No, yeah, but he's, 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 he's said he's gonna, um, buck his ideas up. We've got, oh, chimpanzee that. Carl finds a, uh, an amusing, uh, monkey or ape related story. Um, we've got, uh, Khan in a film again. Right, excellent. Yeah, we've had a lot of great response from that, Carl, uh, on the internet. And it stuff, was my email. favourite thing we've done. People raving about that. Um, so and, what's, uh, uh, can we say what the film is? And week? excuse my French, we've got some bloody great music. <laughs> oh, pardon me, moo. Wow, I don't know, I can't speak French. <laughs> well, say? I'll just give you a, a taste. We've got Oasis, Cardigans, you've just heard there. We've got Lloyd Carl, we've got a bit of Pretenders coming up, Eminem, Feeder, Coldplay, all the greats. Can I play some Teenage Fan Club later? Yeah, 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 yeah. What do we have now? Oasis. Go on, then. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Oasis and Songbird. It's a nice little ditty. It's all right, yeah. It's of a Saturday. Saturday. Yes, thank you. XFM one hundred four point nine. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I, I think we should go straight into it, Carl. I think you sh we should uh, do the competition. The the uh, there's Carl in the corner. It seems Whatever. a little premature. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think Just so. Save it. It's yeah, so good. It's we should exactly. we should tease it out. Well, of them. it's it's a big it's a big thing. It's just that I've got absolutely nothing to say. I've Sure. So I haven't really- Well, I mean, like, like, often I know you all have spoken to Carl in the week. This week, for some reason, I've been speaking to him. Oh, right. I spoke briefly to him about Michael Jackson and the documentary. Yeah. Now, of course, that, I thought that was extraordinary. It was and, uh, amazing I asked Carl's piece opinion. of work. Yeah. And he didn't mention to me, uh, the fact that Michael Jackson likes to climb up in trees. No. He didn't mention anything about his bizarre relationship with children. He didn't mention anything about his obsessive billionaire spending sprees. Right. He didn't spe se mention anything about the, uh, mannequins he has in his thing or the fact that he drives around his, his sort of seven hotel suites in Las Vegas in a little kind of old people's scooter. The first, the only thing of note for Carl was he said to me, did you notice how big his hands are? I tell you what, though, I did. What? How are you looking? The man's got like a face that he's had reconstructed. Well, I can't even tell. That's libelous. Yeah, no, but, no, um, he hasn't. He hasn't. He's got he's an he's had two. He's had two face. jobs. Yeah, and you're looking I, at his hands. But I think it's because you look at him and he looks a bit like. Is it, there's a bit of androgyny there, but it's sort of like a. It is quite a um, petite. Sort of old lady's face in a way, but then you see these labourers' <laughs> hands come out. It's always the way with a tranny, isn't it? You know what I mean? Well, you can't accuse him of being a tranny. No, he's not. No, I'm, no, he's not. What a did tranny. you say? No, I know, he's, he's got, got enough issues. Now you're accusing him. Of being a tranny. I like him. I thought he came out that brilliant. I, I, I thought it was really. I really felt sorry for him. Um, and uh, no, I think he cleared up a few things uh, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was a fascinating piece of work, but. Um, uh, I did like the shopping spree. That was great. Extraordinary. Cause just going around, bad just taste. pointing. I know it's it was bad taste, wasn't it? It was like one of those bizarre shops. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's uh, anything sort of a gift shop, but they're trying to make it look like men. But if it, yeah, I mean, and if it he, sprayed gold. If he'd been living in a trailer park, he'd have been ordering, you know, one of those uh, porcelain dolls dressed like a Harley Davidson I know, bike yeah. rider, or uh, you know, an Elvis commemorative plate. It was the kind of but, billionaire equivalent of that. But the hands were a giveaway. It's the same as those sort of what transvestites. Well, like, it's like you get what the, the, was it about his hands? I well, you know, you know when you get like a cab driver or something, right? And he he decides to uh, turn transvestite at about sixty, and he goes on Kilroy. Do you know right. what I mean? That way, he got a twin set of pearls, and he goes, "I've never felt so comfortable." But his hands are still big. He's got a little wig, and he's got the lipstick on, and he's with his teenage kids who are going, "Kill me." Do you think but he's been having surgery on his hands to make them larger? Bigger, yeah. Is that why he was wearing that glove? You must be it. Exactly. Because yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. I, I think he wants to be a goalkeeper. Right. And they said, well, you, you can't, Michael, you've got a big hand. It would help him climb the trees. It is, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. And he can play tennis now without a racket. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, did you make of it, Carl? Were you intrigued? Um, the Michael Jackson thing. Oh. It's, uh, you know, it's alright. But, um, like, that got a load of attention in the press. But the Trisha programme got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, I know, like, that? well, Steve called me up in the week, right? Uh, like, ten o'clock in the morning, I was at work. <laughs> and he goes, uh, you well, she thinks so at ten o'clock. She so thinks you're uh, preparing yeah. this show. Are Most people go to work about eight or nine. You're watching Trisha and that. I said, no, what is it? He goes, oh, you'll be loving it, right? Um, Freaks. Was it, f um, uh, help me, my mum's a freak? Mm, Siamese twins. Right. right. So I couldn't watch it, but he said, oh, it might be on again, because they repeat stuff on ITV2. Right. So I, I had my dinner late. <laughs> Right, instead of having it at like one o'clock like I normally do, yeah. I had it at like two thirty. Yeah. Sat in the office, put the telly on, ITV two. Um, these Siamese twins. Did it blow your mind? It was amazing. You know, we we talk about a lot of things on the show quite a lot. The Airy Kids 
crop up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. It's been ten minutes and you yeah. haven't mentioned the hairy kid. Right. And, uh, last week we were talking about Siamese twins, weren't yeah. we? So it was, it was weird that this program was on, but it was amazing. I mean, what, what I think you, think you can't refer to them as Siamese twins. I think they're known as conjoined twins. Why? I think, I think Siamese is maybe considered derogatory or as an old antiquated phrase. Yeah, right. I think it's because the first famous ones were actually from Siam. Right, right. Anyway. And, and, and that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> no, it's so conjoined, Carl. Yeah. Get the phrase right. But you'd think that if that's happened to you, that wouldn't be that sort of offensive. The names that you must get called. Right. You think that's the least of your worries? twins, I'd say, well, that's, yeah. Now, were you worries. stunned by where they were connected? <laughs> Just live with it, we'd say. Right. Because they were connected, of course, at, at the forehead. Oh, God. Sort of, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. God. What if one had bad breath? I, th that wasn't a, a question that Trisha asked. <laughs> 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 Annoyingly, because I know that much of the audience was thinking that. There was, was a few things that didn't crop up. <laughs> what, what? what questions would you have asked of them? Because what things did you feel weren't mentioned? Um, I'd love to just watch Carl watching well, amazing exactly. things. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's like like t early learning. Uh, thing. Mouth slightly open. Yeah, mouth slight open. Slight like dribble, <gasps> looking round to see if anyone else has seen Ooh. it. You know what I mean? That, like with a cat sees a bird land on the balcony. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> it, 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 it can't believe it's luck. I'd probably say, how do you buy a like a birthday present? <laughs> a surprise <laughs> gift, yeah. Because everything's ruined. Sure. Right? Um, I'd probably ask. Uh, yeah. Well, did you not think it was interesting that one of them had a boyfriend? Well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Uh-huh. But, um, what was the other thing that I was thinking when I was watching it? I was thinking if one got into crime and that was sent to prison... Right. ...what, what would happen? <laughs> How would you handle that? <laughs> it's brilliant. It is brilliant. If a chimp could talk. And, uh, what was the other one? The other thing was, um, what did they talk about? Because it's not as if you can say, oh... I well, guess what I did today. Is <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, brass in pocket, and if uh, they're pretending to be good, they're doing a bloody good job of it. <laughs> I love them. That's Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl is still buzzing about these conjoined. Twins. Uh, it's just one of them, of course, had to be because one of them was sort of shorter than the other and had to be sort of wheeled around on a kind of trolley thing oh, by, this, by the other. By this the other is twins. Molly and Dolly, is it? No, they're not. Called, one's called Reba. And oh, I forget what the other one's called. Sheena, maybe, or something like that. Do you, uh, do you remember? Carl? No, I wasn't that impressed with the names. It's just <laughs> yeah. So you immediately put them out of your mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those are rubbish names. I'm uh, forget, forget, forget. Carl, forget. Well, they, forget well, they're gone. Were they British or American? American. Yeah, American. Oh, because I've, I've I've seen some American ones. Well, on bizarrely, Jay's one of them was a apparently a country music star. This is Molly and Dolly. Well, they're not called the Molly one that and joined Dolly. at the Oi. The one that joined. But not, the... I think you've made up the Molly and no, Dolly. No, it was on Jerry Springer. There's a little one that sits on a seat, and the other one carries it round uh, her round, uh, and uh, <laughs> they're not called Molly and Dolly. <laughs> there was something like that. They're called. It... Well, we know that one of them's called Reba, and I forget. The uh, other one of them was a country and western singer. Yeah, one. and one of but she was saying, yeah, I've just uh, made a movie. It's coming out shortly in theatres. <laughs> Is your the sister in it? Yeah, and the other one said, oh, I'm not involved. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, it's utterly bizarre because they they live they they work so hard to live their lives separate. Yeah, they say oh, it's you all know, yeah, exactly. of course. So, yeah, you know they don't, they try not to. So, so she's talking about her music career and the other one's sort of not taking any kind of credit for it, which is nice. It's, it's weird though because when she was singing as well, the other one just stands there. She doesn't join in. She doesn't sort of dance. Offer backing or, vocals. Do you know what I mean? Make a group out of it. <laughs> yeah, a duo. Yeah, well. But it seems like we've sort of been horrible, but we're no, not. We're not. I mean, well, no, really no, we're thing, laughing but... at Carl's amazement at, mm. at this phenomenon. Sorry, I, I just got to say, we're not, we're not, you, you know, know the, taking you know the, the mickey. The really weird thing about all this, right? What? And it's annoying because you were saying about, you know, oh, what should have Trisha have asked and all that. Yeah. But one of them mentioned, um, that one of them was adopted and the other one wasn't. Don't talk rubbish. <laughs> no, seriously. I didn't understand it, right? Of and course then, you didn't. And then Trisha sort of said, well, let's have a chat, and, and they were like, no, I don't want to go into that. What do you mean one was adopted? That's what he said, one of them... <laughs> I don't... Don't quiz me on it, but that's, that's <laughs> what was... That's what was said. Hi there, I may... 
Hello there, I'm a multi-millionaire. Oh, and yeah. I've uh, just seen your orphanage. Oh, I'd yeah, love lovely, to adopt one of your children. You'd like to adopt one? L I'd love to adopt a children. I've got loads from around the world, so I'd love yeah. to adopt one. I'd, I'd give you $10,000 oh, towards oh, your, uh, well, well, your well, we'll speed it through then, yeah, Brilliant. yeah. Okay. We've actually got two left. I so need one. I'm only interested right. in one. Yeah, I don't okay. need any more. Don't need any They're sisters. They, uh, they're I know it would be tragedy to break them up, but I really need one. Now, break up. There's the, there's the rub, you see. Sure, because, sure. Um, you just need the, the one. There's $10,000 now. You can have that. I'll sign it now, but okay. I don't want to discuss I'll it for you. I'll bring it around. I'll bring it around. Brilliant. Okay. okay. Ding dong. Hi, yeah, brilliant. You brought my kid, right? Yeah, there she is there. That's, That's a joy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just standing next to a bush. Yeah, do you wanna- can you bring her out towards no, me? It's like, there's, I, there's nothing behind the bush, so just- you just want- I just want- I want to be able to- I just want to be able to walk 360 degrees round her. Do you want her or not? Yes, I- I can't believe it! What's that little trolley? <laughs> She's talented. Oh dear. You're oh. talking nonsense, Carl. Well, whatever. <laughs> These ideas are nightmares. The white parents whose worst fear was the child with dyed hair and who likes hearing. Feeder. That's it. Just what I'm feeling. XFM. 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's time for the. The newest quiz in town. <laughs> this is where Carl inserts himself into a seminal film. Last week, um, he was the little kid in Sixth Sense. You remember? To, uh, great acclaim. The critics loved it. They said a triumph. Uh, this week, he's fiddled with the graduate. Um, this is the scene where, of course, uh, uh, he goes upstairs to the hotel room and, um, He's, uh, it's, it's on the cards. She's a dead set, Mrs. Robinson. Well. Here we go, then. So, uh, are you ready for it? I've, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Benjamin. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger. I'll tell you what, I've, uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've, uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I d I've never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about my head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Heads should be it's round. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy arse. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I've come to oh, that was a joy. Oh, dear. Oh. It was an absolute treat. Now, I should say that, obviously, uh, the prize is a copy of The Graduate. Now, bear in mind that XFM is giving away these prizes. Yeah. Carl is so cheap that he wouldn't even buy it on DVD. He's oh. bought it for six ninety nine on VHS. It will be panned and scanned. It won't be widescreen. There's none of the extra features that you get on the DVD. Oh, That's look at Carl's can... face. He's got it. Carl, did you pocket the rest of the cash? No, no. I have to use my own money to buy these, right? What, you're, you're using your own money to give this stuff away? Yeah. So I had to go and buy that. XFM is so cheap. I'm I stunned. know. Right? I know. And, uh... It's not worth having it on DVD, is it? Why it's not? An, it's an old film, so... <laughs> So the quality is, is uh, do you know what I mean? They can't really tidy it up. Of course they can! They do it from a print. They don't do it from the video. They don't get, they don't get the video and go, let's make it into yeah, a DVD. an old Max copy <laughs> that someone had knocking about. Uh, well, anyway, you it's can... It's the same film, though, isn't it? Uh, Fine, okay, well, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but anyway, film, you yeah. can win, uh, six ninety nines <laughs> worth of The Graduate. The question, and it's email only, Steve, uh, Steve, it's not Steve, it's Ricky 
dot gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. The question is, name the actor that Carl uh, was taking the place of in the film, and of course the actress that he's performing opposite. Ricky dot gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Lovely. Do you want to play something from the- I would love to. It would seem appropriate. Yeah. Dear Mr. Simon and Mr. Garfunkel, please, let's not have the sound of silence. Let's have some more beautiful music. Get back together, please, quickly. Uh, I think what? you should do every single link. Like <laughs> it's the best bit of the show. That's <laughs> uh, uh, on XFM 104.9. Are we well, going to have go. time to play the clip again before, uh, I don't know, before two o'clock, let's say? Are people not listening to the question? Is that what you're... Are Some just... people are not listening to the question. Oh, dear. Okay, we'll, we'll play it again at about two then. And personally, any excuse to hear it again, because I thought it was uh, I, th I think Carl should go out and get the DVD. I think it's embarrassing to give away the uh, Yeah, the you have to get it. You have to go out and buy the DVD later. Carl, on the DVD, it's got a booklet, it's got an audio commentary, it's got behind-the-scenes features, and it's got this pristine widescreen version of the film. You've got some cheap 6 99 version Yeah, and so, VHS. because you were being mean, because it was your own money, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to waste that now because yeah. no one wants it. So it's gonna cost you t twice as much as it would have done if you just got the DVD the first time round. <laughs> a valuable mm. lesson learned. Have yeah. I re have I rewound it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a penalty if you've not. No, you haven't rewound it. Go and get the DVD later. This, the, they're going to win a DVD. No, I looked at the DVD and it was 18 quid. I'm Go not and get it quid for and it. claim it back. No, you've got to wait. Ages. What a cheap station this is. It's outrageous. I mean. Oh. Well, do you want to go on with the other prizes with, uh, what we're giving away later? What, what is this for Rockbusters? Well, We don't give away prizes, we throw away prizes. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> really <laughs> cleaning out, cleaning <laughs> yeah. out some drawers in XFM. Go on. I'm just having a quick look through before I- Cause we've sort of revamped Rockbusters a bit, there's that extra bit in it <sighs> now, isn't there, that audio bit? You're selling it, you're big, a big sell. Oh, we've well, not going straight there. into that yet, though. There's no, a DVD, no, no, no. there's a DVD there, what's I'll, that? I'll go through them later, Rick, I just need to absorb it. Don't so, get excited, So, uh, who did, uh, Carl play in the clip? What actor's place did he, uh, take? And what actress played opposite him? Um, that's Ricky Dot Gervais. At xfm.co.uk. Sure. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Is that it then? We'll what we got play, coming up? We've got some... Bit, play a bit of Coldplay. Let's have a bit it. of Coldplay, be right. Coldplay. Yellow on XFM 104.9. Get it on DVD. It's an embarrassment. Seven quid's worth of old video, pan and scanned. I bought it now, that's what they're getting. Right. He's put a downer on it. All the work, you know, that went into that, and then just gonna fob them off with a bit of old celluloid like that. Right, listen, still to come, right? We've got, um, the, the monkey's thing. Ooh, chimpanzee that! And when I was out last Sunday, right, at Johnny's birthday party, Yeah. Steve was there. Yeah. Got talking about stuff, um, and a debate that we didn't really finish cropped up. It blew your mind, didn't it? Amazing. Oh, no. I know about this. Steve told me. This is the, uh, infinite amount of monkeys, um, or a monkey with a typewriter and an infinite amount of time would eventually come up with the works of Shakespeare. Yeah. There was no debate. It's a philosophical, mathematical problem. There's no debate. It's true. It wouldn't happen. No, listen, Carl, listen. Infinity sorts it all out for you, right? An infinite amount of monkeys at a typewriter, right? They would do, they do everything. They type everything. Infinity just sorts it all out for you. There's no getting to it and they're going, oh well, uh, let's have a look what they've done. <gasps> this one's come close. Did Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> it would do it all. It would type everything ever possible, conceivable. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a mathematical thing. Well, Infinity we've sort. heard your side of the argument, Rick. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, it's a persuasive one, <laughs> but let's hear Carl, because he yeah. heard about this in a pub last week, yeah, so he's got some strong What's your problem himself? with it? What's your problem with it? Well, f first of all, right, you're saying it's a load of monkeys. It's not just one monkey that's- It depends. That can live forever. It, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's either a, a chimpanzee with a typewriter, with an infinite amount of time, he would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything ever possible, okay? Or, it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already that's, that's sort of, that's not right. You either need to have what one monkey- What do you mean, what, what, you mean, the, the, uh, employment laws, point. what he do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out. Please. Okay. If it's one monkey- <laughs> Yeah. With a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right? At least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't, it's not- Keep going! Cry. If you've got a load of monkeys, 
It's like, it's like if you have too many, what's that saying about too many chefs Too many spoil chimps spoil the soup. Right. Well, it's the same thing. It's like, well, I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it. I was gonna put salt in it and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one, they know what's gone on. So what I'm saying I, I, is- I, I, just leave him go. I can't I'll, be bothered, Steve. I want to hear, I want I, to hear it, the This rest. blows my mind. He doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just, I just don't think it will happen. What I do mean, you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you, by definition. Well, what's stopping them typing the same thing again? They would. They, in fact, the problem should be, if you had an infinite amount uh, uh, of time, that, um, it would type, that works with Shakespeare an infinite amount of times, and everything else an infinite amount of times. But, you know, that's not, that's just, that's, that's not as- But not, not Shakespeare. Oh! Shut up! You, you know, idiot! Rick, do you know what he said to me? I said to him, uh, I just explained it to him, I said, God. you've got an infinite number of rankings, infinite number of typewriters, they will type the complete works of Shakespeare. He yeah. said, have they read Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot! Play I record, said, no, I'm not having this conversation. Not doing it I'm not having it, I'm not having it, because it really, really winds me up. But you're saying they'll do it with no spelling errors? Well, they do it, uh, uh, they do it an infinite amount of times. And they do it, they do it wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it, and they spell, uh, the last full stop. Uh, wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it and they get one thing wrong in Hamlet wrong an infinite amount of times. They do everything an infinite amount of times. But are they going off a story that they've- Play record, Carl, cos <laughs> I'm gonna knock you out! I'm just saying- SHUT UP! Do they know the story? Oh, oh They're gonna... monkeys! Oh, Christ. No, right. what? Okay. What? Lloyd Cole, she's a girl and I'm a man. Good that, innit? It's on XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. As yeah. ever, Rick, there's always someone who steps in to defend Carl. Uh, uh, okay, uh, what is the defence? What here's is the defence? Here's a, an email from Scott Coomer. He says, Carl is actually right. I've got an A-level in statistics and probability. It doesn't matter how long they have and how many monkeys you have, you cannot guarantee they would type the complete works of Shakespeare. Infinity makes it probable they, they would get it right, but not definite. Yeah. Well, y yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. No. No, you weren't saying, Carl. You don't understand it. Infinity sort of sorts it out. That if they do- if they do- if they do anything, they're- they nearly do everything, won't they? No, I mean, they'll give it a good shot. <laughs> no, that's not the point. But the, the I'd point be is this- I'd surprised if they did one page right. Right, listen. <laughs> it's not to do with consciousness. It's not to do with them aiming. They are it's, just bashing away it's at like, the keyboard. It's, it's like they're, they're, they're used to show that there isn't consciousness. They, they, they chose the chimpanzee because it can type, presumably, it's hit because, the keyboard. It's because they hadn't come across you at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's to take out thought out of it. It's to take out reason and trying, right? Mm. It's just random. They're saying that if you typed enough things, if the computer was left like that, typing everything, if you left it for an infinite amount of time, and they chose Shakespeare because there is meaning behind it, and it's difficult to get it exactly right to show you that Infinity would come up with a it's not just Shakespeare, it's every novel. It's everything. Fairly eloquent there from Gervais. A quick repost, please, from Carl Pilkington. No, I'm just saying what I don't understand. <laughs> if it hasn't read it, then how does uh, it know where it's going? Oh! I- listen, right. I, okay, listen, right. I- I- can I can't- I, can, I just, look, can I just explain to people, right? Some people have said, oh, why are you cruel to Carl? He drives me mental with things well, like that. What do you mean, well? well can I just- well, let me just- you just, you just take a breather <laughs> How do I do your editing? He keeps coming in in the week. You know that I work here properly, <laughs> yeah, in the week. <laughs> Don't I? Yeah, I've got a proper job, yeah? Yeah. Uh, should be nine to five, but I normally get in at about eight o'clock and work A lot of people get in at eight o'clock. Working hard, trying to do my job. Three times this week, I've been rushing around, I walk past my little studio, he's sat in there, alright? <laughs> now, because I've got this sort of job, I can get away with it. I said to him, if I was a doctor, <laughs> would he keep coming to me practice? If you were a doctor, there'd be <laughs> severe problems with the NHS. Well, oh, imagine so, that. Uh, the standards I'm would have lowered so much to, we go to if lunch. you can arrive at the hospital you're well, a doctor. Well, pop in, I go to lunch, don't we? We have a little lunch break, don't we? Oh, I go, no. come on, let's go now. He goes, I'm busy. I go, come on, let's go now. He's going, oh, you're doing me, head in. Well, when I was talking about the monkey conundrum with Carl, he said to me, right, if I had a day off work, and I was, say, watching the TV, and with one hand I was typing uh, a typewriter, <laughs> would I type Shakespeare? <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, but you see, there's certain things. We were talking a little bit about this stuff the other week, weren't we, when we said uh, <laughs> you were going on about Einstein, and I said he's not that good. Um, you know, he calls MC Square. You know, it sounds good, but I've never used it. And that, right? <laughs> I've never yeah. used it! Uh, you haven't used two and two equals four, Carl! The fella with an apple fell on his head. You know, it could have been anyone sat under that tree. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just annoying. <laughs> Lucky. Uh, yeah. And, and Newton, gets all, Newton gets all the credit <laughs> no, yeah. you know for his mean? laws of the universe. <laughs> well, a lot of people were working whilst he was having a lunch break under the okay. tree. So, in a way, it's like he didn't deserve to have that again, success story. Again, forget the apple and the tree and whether he was sitting down having a lunch break. It's, it's totally irrelevant. Yeah, but what I'm saying is there's certain things that will just happen. You know, it's like I think we were talking when we were out eating the other week. We were talking about Noel Gallagher. Well, this is reason the, the monkey right. discussion came up, right? We God. were- Noel Gallagher- I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Rick, I don't want to misquote Noel. I'd be like, Herbert uh, Lom in Clue Song, I'm gonna get a twitch whenever he opens his mouth. I don't know what- I don't know- I don't know where to start with some of his statements. Well, as I say, this all- this discussion began because we were talking about a quote that Noel Gallagher supposedly gave. Now, I don't want to misquote Gallagher, but the gist of it was that he said, um, uh, had I- uh, written Wonderwall or whatever, instead of the Beatles writing Strawberry Fields or whatever, I'd be the one that was considered the great songwriter and it wouldn't be the Beatles, you know, it's just the fact that they came first that meant that they get all the credit as being the greatest band I in the world. I don't know where to start with that statement and, either. I mean, that's Gallagher's thing and, uh, and he's, you know, well, whatever, we know what you think, we think of that. What was your point, Carl? You I, agreed with him, didn't you? Yeah, I reckon, right, do you know how we've talked about putting a baby in a room before and it, and it'll know what colour it is and stuff? If, if you've got a room that's painted red, Right, but uh, forget that because that's going to confuse. Hear him out. Hear him out. Listen, can I, can I Rick, uh, hear listen him to out. me. Say if they did some new TV show, right? Like, um, what's that film with Jim Carrey in where the uh, the Truman Show? The Truman Show, right? So they make up a little room, and uh, some woman has some kids, and you say, right, let's put the kids in this room, and they don't know what's going on outside. They they, they don't know anything about like East Enders and that. It's like their little world, right? They don't know anything that's gone on. How could a child survive without EastEnders? <laughs> right, listen, so, he's sat in the room, right, and then when they're all asleep- right, this, Wait for this bit. Someone pops- have, have you heard this Yeah, bit? wait for this bit. They're all in a room. Yeah. They're asleep. Yeah. Someone pops in, puts a guitar next to the bed, <laughs> right, nips off out again. They wake up in the morning, and uh, one of them goes, what's this? They don't even know it's a guitar because they've never seen one, right? They're talking so, English though. Yeah. We just left a guitar out of the vocabulary. Right, so... There's plenty more to come. So, one of them will pick it up, and they'll go, I don't know what it is, and they'll start strumming, and they'll go, that sounds good, doesn't it? Give them a few weeks, they could come up with Hey Jude. Whereas, saying, typing Shakespeare, a monkey that can't even spell... I see that. You <laughs> <laughs> can't answer it. Can't I answer might it. come that's, with you, Rick, if that's okay, all right. Okay, Does that we've got, we've got sort of that Christmas special as well. Yeah, no, sure, sure. Oh, I, I see okay. that. Yeah. Well, I'm shooting off then as well. Cheers, pal. Mm. Cheers. Nips. Yashini Battles the Pink Robots and XFM 104.9. Before the ad break, Steve Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle. Great track. Lovely to hear that. Brilliant track. We're not scared of playing that sort of stuff, are we? Indeed. We've got some great... I think we're underestimated here. People think we're just like, you know, two guys and a buffoon in a room. <laughs> but we're so much more than that. We, you know, we try and put together a whole package for them, don't yeah. they, for their Saturday afternoon listening pleasure. If there was an infinite number of us three in an infinite, in an infinite number of studios yeah. broadcasting for an infinite number of shows, would we ever do anything half decent? Yeah, we eventually- Would we ultimately come up with something quite what good? What was that email that you were laughing at? I can't, it's too rude. What does it say? It's well, too- it's too nasty. Oh, go on, give me the gist of it. The gist of it was that, um, it would mean that if there was that infinite number of monkeys, eventually, besides the fact that they would type the complete works of Shakespeare, they would also type the sentence, Carl Pilkington is a genius, but- the email also said it would also type, Ricky Gervais is a- I can't say the word, but, uh... I know. Yeah. But the number of times they type it and write, Carl Pilkin is a genius and Ricky Gervais is a cund. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they would, they, that would be there a lot. Um, yeah. Before we uh, carry on with anything, I should just tell you, we're, we're on the subject of emails. There's one emailer we're always looking forward to hearing from. DICKERS! Richie Anderson! Anderson. Dicky Ducky Doo! Richard Anderson, thanks for emailing. He's, and, uh, my, uh, he's my biggest fan He's now. one of the biggest he fans. He absolutely loves me. But, not afraid to offer some constructive criticism. Go on, That's the great said. thing about Dicky. And from Anders this week he says, Ricky, I'm lazy, I talk nonsense, I'm badly organised and I believe in ghosts. Can I have a job working on your show? <laughs> Um, <laughs> ah, possibly, uh, Anders. Maybe send in a CV. 
Or email us. He's got a little bit of all of us in that, hasn't exactly. he? <laughs> oh, I asked you if he's a goggle-eyed freak, Steve. All right, calm down. Well, no, I didn't no, mean. No need to get insulted. No, I didn't necessarily no mean nasty. you. No did need I? to get nasty. Well, so I was thinking about that actually, Steve. Oh God. <laughs> Just talking of of the old. Uh, what? What? Talking of the what? No. Do you know, like? This better be good. No, you don't have that many girlfriends. And that. What? What do you mean, Carl? Why are we on this? I wasn't. I was defending you in the whole monkey discussion. Come on, what's, oh, your, right, point? No, what's your point? What's your point? What's your point? No, what's the point? What's the point? I just was thinking, <sighs> if there was an infinite number of Steves, <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you, you know, you're an odd-looking fella. Uh, come on, Carl, get to the. No, you know, cut I know that. Quick. I've told you that loads of times. What do you mean? Quick. You know, I know that. Well, there's no point pretending anymore. <laughs> Steve, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. But also, you don't like spending money. Right? <gasps> He's mean and weird-looking. Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh. Are you sort of, oh. uh, oh. Oh. you know? You've got to love him now, haven't you? What What are you happier with? The fact that no girls like you enough, right? <laughs> this is meant. This is really mental. Or are you happy because you don't have to spend any money on a card for someone? Which... A little from column A. A little from column B. <laughs> Wait, let's have so let's have more monkey news. What well, have we got? No, wait, we've got a we've got so much right? to get into this show. Insults. We don't stupidity. need the insults. I think we've got enough. We don't need the insults. Yeah, there's no more insults. No what more insults. What angers me with Carl is you know he's been planning that. No, I haven't. I, I was well, I was thinking about it on the way in because Valentine's Day is coming up and I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> condoms. Right. You, you bought your girlfriend a box of condoms for Christmas. I don't think you can ever go at me. <laughs> to no, be well, fair. No, but I don't just treat her on. Valentine's, I'm always. Do you know what I mean? You don't even treat her on Valentine's. You don't even treat her at Christmas or on her <laughs> birthday. When do you treat her? Hang on a minute. Wait a cotton picking minute there. Oh, uh, why I order. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. What was that? Tiffany Dog. I treat your girlfriend better than you, <laughs> and I've only met her twice. <laughs> I took her out last night and she enjoyed herself. Where'd yeah. you go? Until she had to write the check. Where'd you go? Where'd to, you go? Uh, to a chippy. A, a really. <laughs> Oh. Play a record! It to was a, a chippy? <laughs> no, a really a quality one. Right. Oh, God! Well, under a fiver for two oh, nice lots. wrapping. Not newspaper, greaseproof paper. And bread. And bread. Ash, and sometimes on XFM 104.9, I'm looking to with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. We've got so much to get through. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, all right, London's shit, innit? it? Um, sorry. I shouldn't swear on an on air, on air much studio. Never, never swear on an on air studio. Yeah. Um, apologies. Not really swearing, is it? No. I'll tell you what swearing is. <laughs> oh. oh. Um, so, uh, yeah, graduate, you're gonna play that again and give a winner. Give a winner. Well, let's hear it. Uh, so it's Carl Pilkington featuring in <laughs> The Graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Here we go, then. So, uh, are you ready for it? And have, uh, Brought some condoms from home that uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Benjamin. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger. <sighs> Tell you what, I've uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and uh, weren't mates. Both of the same thing, which is a bit, bit weird. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about my head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Ed should be it's round. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy arse. 
Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, oh dear. A classic, an Oscar winning classic. Oh, Carl Pilkington. In The Graduate. But what was the question, Steve? The question was, which actor was Carl Pilkington taking the role of? Well, that's easy. Everyone which knows actress that. was he, uh, performing opposite? I know that. And the answer is Ricky? Hoffman. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, Bancroft. And Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, and the, <laughs> 699 VHS cassette is going to Laura Gomez, because she says that she'd be happy with the VHS, not the DVD, so, uh, best of luck to her. I hope she enjoys that. All right. Yeah? What will we do next week? Uh, I've oh, got loads of, uh, um, uh... I quite like hearing Carl in a sort of seductive environment. It gives you another insight into him. It gives you another dimension. I know. E.T. it is, then. <laughs> <laughs> X. And the track X. Have you seen 8 Mile, really? I, lo- I really enjoyed it. You'll notice Exhibit makes a little cameo in there. Yeah, and, uh, th- that last bit, that, that wrap-off at the end, well, I, it was lovely. It was so... It was just like, it was like Rocky or something. Should we have just... a wrap-off, maybe next week? Yeah. The three yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah. Let's try and, um, uh, master the art of talking yeah, civilly to each other first before we start making it rhyme. <laughs> oh, Rockbusters, Carl? Yeah. I'm not a champion of Rockbusters, as you know, but I think it's overstayed its welcome. But I'm going well, to go Well, I think Carl's it. just giving the fans what they want here. Okay. It's yeah. a popular thing, isn't it? Got the, some good prizes. The press well, behind it. <laughs> let me tell you what the prizes are. Uh, it's a dance music compilation, Cream Trance Anthems 2003. Brilliant. We play a lot of trance on well, this I, station. Well, I put that on quite a lot and don't <laughs> exactly. do it myself. Uh, there's the uh, original motion picture soundtrack to the forthcoming film adaptation. When you've seen the film, uh, I'm sure that will mean more to you. You it's like that, good, don't you? It's a good movie, yeah. Nicolas Cage I playing himself and a twin brother. And uh, it's written by uh, Spike, uh, it's directed by Spike John. Joined at the, uh, what? Uh, no, no, they're not joined mm. at the hip at all. No. Or, or at the face. And, uh, we've also got the best one-hit wonders album in the world ever. What have we got on there? We've got things like uh, The Crazy World of Arthur Brown, brilliant. Um, Nana, 99 Red Balloons. The Rembrandt. In fact, it kicks off with Nana. Sure. Uh, that's followed up by I'll Be There For You, the theme from Friends by the Rembrandts. Yeah. And, of course, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. Brilliant. Deep Blue Something. <laughs> is that the worst name ever? <laughs> I think it possibly is. No, Sixpence None the Richer. Sixpence None the Richer. That's, that's a pretty good. bad name. Okay, again, we, we, I know we've got a lot of, uh, Chill Out fans who listen yeah, to yeah, us, so, um, yeah, 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 the best yeah. Chill Out album ever. Yeah. Bear in mind, of course, all these prizes collated by, uh, Carl from, I guess, People's Draw. Yeah, looking in the drawer, looking in the drawer. <laughs> oh, dearie me. What is it? The only thing probably worth having is a, um, I mean, it's topical, if nothing else, Carl. A seven inch by the White Stripes. Merry Christmas from the White Stripes. That was their, um, exclusive Brilliant. Christmas single. So if yeah, you're that's, it's, that's it's early, isn't it? That's, it's, uh, it's you get that. Something. It is worth A lot of people have got to wait 11 months before that's released. Yeah. Or is it last Christmas? Is <laughs> Exactly. And I have never heard of this DVD. Go on. I like to think of myself as being fairly familiar with TV and films, but I have never heard of Stephen King's Rose Red. <laughs> Welcome on to DVD. a place evil calls home. And, uh, it's on DVD, it's Certificate 12, so don't imagine anything too shocking. And it looks, uh, appalling. Is Rose Red Mansion truly haunted to find out Professor da 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 so might da 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 Okay, we've got the gist of it. They're not very good prizes, it. they're cobbled together, but if you've got nothing better to do, call in if you know the answers to these clues. It's Rockbusters. Let's not right, let them so call in, Rick. Please don't let you, these people call in. I no, no, some, they're not calling uh, in, it's email only. Carl, don't interrupt me. I'm just... Um, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Email only. I can't stress that enough. We just don't want to speak to you people. <laughs> right, go on. Right, so I give some initials out and a cryptic clue and it makes up the answer and that. Well, sometimes it does, yeah. Go there's on. two of them, <laughs> there's a new aspect which I'll explain about in a minute. Oh, so, God. the first one is, uh, cryptic clue is, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet it would have been alright. <coughs> and the initial there is B, right? So, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been alright. B, right? Uh, band or an artist. Second one, uh, why are them Jamaican fellas swinging fish around their head? <laughs> okay. Alright, initials. Just fills me with. D S. D S. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Alright? And the uh, final bit, <laughs> two rockbusters. <laughs> uh, it's a new bit. Last week I played you this. <laughs> His face goes along right. with it. That's uh, that's someone beating up a dog. That was smack my bitch up, right? So here's some sound effects and that, and they make up a song. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to him talk all day. Let's have a listen to the effects. <laughs> right. That's terrifying. Right. 
I told you not to play that one, it's rubbish. No one will get that. Well, we'll see. I heard that a couple of weeks ago, so what do you think? I said it's rubbish, no one will get it. No, it's not the one you think it is. Ah. Uh -huh. Right, so, um, email in, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and you can win that stuff. I'm a little bit confused. Let me, I, I, I'm here, I've heard what you're saying, we've discussed this in the past, I don't know what's happening. What's that? Is that, a, is that a clue? That's a cryptic clue, that, that, um, screaming to a song, is it? It was screaming. Well, don't say it! So it should stand up by itself! Don't give him any clue! Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. So this is the name of a song. It's not a band or an artist, yeah, the that's, sound effect. So the first two are uh, bands or artists, and the the, the last one <laughs> is the name <laughs> of a song. I said we should abandon this! I said we should just pack it in! What, the show? Yes! Come Zemo. on, someone talk! <laughs> I'm looking at his face, his headphones are too loud. Instead of turning them down, he's just grimacing, going, these are too loud. <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah, I, I you lived this long? How did you make it to 30 without getting squashed or eating something deadly poisonous? Well, I told you, I used to choke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> ah! We've had an email from, uh, ah! Placebo, the bitter end. We've had an email from Andrew Forrest, who has just simply entitled it, Carl Pillockton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl Pillockton. What do you think of that? Oh, that's gotta be your new name from now on. Oh. Uh, I had a mate who, uh, I used to use it. What, he used, he used to, to call you that? Yeah. Was that your nickname at school, Pillicton? No, it's not my nickname. It is now. No, it's not. It is now. Pillicton. Pillicton. Oi, Pillicton. Oi, Pillicton. Pillicton, do Oi. my own work. Where Actually. do you live? Where do you come from? Pillicton? No, there's this lad who, uh, called Mark, right, who he used to go to school with, who, uh, used to call me that. And, uh, <laughs> his mum, <ma> right, <laughs> was, like, obsessed with cleaning. And I was never allowed in their flat. <laughs> he makes the place look untidy. So she used to, I don't know if it was just me or, or all his mates, but I used to turn up and she goes, yeah, he is in, but you know what you've got to do? And I used to have to go round the side of his flat, and he had a computer, right, which I used to play, I, I didn't have one at that point, but he had one. And I used to have to go round the side of the flat and stand at his bedroom window with his window open and I'd be sort of leaning in playing the game. <laughs> you are joking! Not, his you had the weirdest stuff <laughs> thinking I've ever heard. The, the things you were willing to do. <laughs> it's the strangest. What is this town like? No, stop going. Was, was there always the music going? <laughs> There's the horse in the house there. Oh, look at these two kids with big heads and webbed feet. All right. All right, Ronnie. All right, Reggie. What, what no, was it, it was, like? She was, she was obsessed. It is like you've grown up in a cartoon made for children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, his mum was really, um, obsessed with cleaning. I, I, when, um... Can I play through his window? <laughs> I used to... Put used Mrs. Ramsbottom, can I play through Mark's window? <laughs> Aye, right, you know what you have to do. She used to be up till that is three that in the Pilikton morning. Is that Pillicton again? <laughs> <laughs> what do you have mean? you yeah. washed your hands? Well, up till three in the morning, washing. She used to be up doing the tiles in the kitchen. Washing until three in the morning? Until three in the morning. And for ages and ages, I, that's, what, that saying, that out on the tiles, I used to think that came from, like, his mum. Because she was out, like, cl cleaning them late, so, until I was about 13, I thought that saying, out late, on the tiles, yeah. was... And now you're not confused by anything. <laughs> well... There's no misunderstandings in your life now, is there? So, so what did, was he was allowed to walk in and out of the house, was no, he? No, he was alright, but, and he used to come round to ours a lot, and my mum used to get these pies from Agenbach's, right? <laughs> so... I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's at that bakery where they used to chuck the cakes out the back, oh, I'll yeah. tell you about. Yeah. I oh, and you're at six. you at six. He loved it, but I could never go round to theirs. Or if I did, it was like, well, yeah, he is in, and I go, all right, and then I'd, I'd walk round the side of the flat, <laughs> stand outside. <laughs> Why did you ever knock at the door? Why don't you just go round and knock on the window? Just to check he's in, because he wasn't always in his room. If you he say was it was in the a lounge. A... He'd have to go to his bedroom, and then that's you where say to meet you. I, this is the strangest. And you'd play a computer game through the window. You yeah. say it was a flat. It wasn't like a fifth story one, and you had to get in one of those kind of cleaning contraptions <laughs> and like <laughs> winch your way up. <laughs> On the, on I the love floor. the idea of that. So. Oh, Pillockton. So, right, uh, we're done, Rockbusters. Right, what, have, have you got me any, uh, chimpanzee that? We've or? got monkey news still, still to cram in in the next, like, Let's do monkey news now. I, want, no, I need some monkey no, news. No, I think we've done enough here, right? What do you mean? I think we've done enough here. We'll, we'll play a little song, eh? What? We'll play, um, play the verb. Alright. Go ahead.
He's uh, getting all stressed because I scream. Sparky Stream, Teenage Fan Club. I'll tell you, I'm sick of the screaming, Rick. I'm <laughs> sick of that. I mean, no wonder Carl hates you, and that is the word I don't use often, but he does, and I've spoken <laughs> to him in the past, and he loathes you. Monkey news. Give us one of the screams so the audience at home gets a taste of it. I'm taking my headphones off. No, I'm not going to scream. Go on, let's see what. Let's ah! see. Right, well, that come wasn't on. what you were doing. Uh, was it worse than that? Yes. Right, come on, monkey news. We're it's not, not called we're monkey news. It's not called monkey news. Uh, chimpanzee, we're not gonna pack all the monkey stuff in. We've got a quarter of an hour. What, what other show can say that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've got- we're not gonna pack in all the monkey yeah. news. We've got fifteen minutes but we can't get all the monkey information <laughs> in. Right, go on. Well, you're gonna love this one. Uh, go on, let's have, there... the, uh, let's have the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Right, Um I don't know how recent this was. Oh, God. Seventeenth century? But it, ha it happened in Acne, right? <laughs> Uh, if you're outside London, that's in a place in London. Um, and it's this monkey that's going about acne, nicking DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Even the monkey didn't go for videos. <laughs> Even the monkey knew. Well, there's no point in getting on VHS. The grudge on VHS. You're having a- Do it back. Right, and there's a girl called Lisa who works in our office here, right, and I mentioned it to her because uh, she lives in Hackney. I said, uh, you familiar with this? And, uh, she said, oh, I remember something about it, which annoyed me. The fact that a monkey's running riot, but she couldn't- she didn't know the full story. <laughs> and she lives there. What, is, what do you mean a monkey? Do you mean a- do you mean a chimpanzee? Or a um, monkey? I don't know, is he a zoo in Acne? Is he a zoo there? I don't, I don't know, know what sort it was, but it, it, it was like- Is there on. a zoo in Hackney? I don't know. I don't know. That's what I was asking. <laughs> so, right, um, get on with the story. So anyway, so yeah, it's been robbing stuff. And, um, <laughs> the p the other bit that really puzzled me, right, is the fact that- And you're not easily puzzled by monkey news. They took fingerprints. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, they took fingerprints presumably because they didn't know it was a monkey to start with. No, they did. They saw it, they saw it, nicking stuff, <laughs> and they said get fingerprints. What? So that means there's more than just one doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart attack. He had to fax them to Interpol. Yeah, yeah. We know that is, yeah. It's Brian, it's Brian the monkey. Yeah. Yeah. So Sorry, I don't understand. He was stealing DVDs, specifically DVDs. Yeah, DVDs, I think it said watches and stuff. What, breaking into homes? Yeah, in Hackney. Maybe Are you sure it wasn't a kid with a mask on? No, seriously. How was he breaking into homes? They go down Up the they? drain pipe. They're good, aren't they? They're good, aren't they? <laughs> but how would they do so that? So is that the news? Well, that's what, how much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news? For, the, for this week. Well, I don't know that it's true. Again, I've got nothing there was, to- There was other stuff, there was another story that I found about a monkey, but I'd, I would like to know from someone if- in Hackney if- Do you know what I mean? And I missed that one on Crime Watch, which would've been good. <laughs> right? But there was another story about one that, uh kept getting on buses, not paying its fare- Not paying its fare? And just sat in the corner reading the paper. <laughs> reading the paper, Carl! You're an idiot! <laughs> well, that, that wasn't in London. You're an idiot! That was in America. It wouldn't read somewhere. the paper. Why would it read the paper? Because it was its way of sort of going, oh, well, if I'm reading something, maybe the inspector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the inspector will notice my hairy hands. <laughs> oh, Carl, you're such a fool! Well, Pillington! Oh, yeah. Carl, Carl, I've just had a news flash that an infinite number of monkeys in Hackney are nicking an infinite number of typewriters. Yeah. We don't no. know what for. At this stage, we've got no more information. And they've, they've taken back an infinite amount of graduate on video. <laughs> yeah. so this is yeah. rubbish. <laughs> Supergrass, seeing the light. I just think of people. Sort of uh, other Saturday going, uh, you're coming shopping. I go, I can't, I'm listening to uh, <laughs> XFM. There might be some monkey news. <laughs> and they waited two hours for that. that one, what sort of a, what sort of a show has a feature called monkey news? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, the uh, the monkey story has been corroborated. Someone Which emailed, one? Well, this one, uh, it says, uh, police in Britain this week are on the lookout for a very different kind of burglar, a chimpanzee who has been sighted breaking into a house in Hackney, stealing a mobile phone and leaving. The chimp is also the prime suspect in a break and entry in a nearby house where part of a radio was taken. One policeman stated that it might have been trained to steal, but a monkey's not gonna think, that's a mobile phone, I'll just have that. Look at Carl's face. Yeah. Fact. That's fact. So, um, rockbusters then. Yeah. Get these out of the way, we 
running out of time now. I have to say now that so. we've had no answers that have attempted even to guess all three. Right, you see, now, see, that's because you're an idiot. Uh, right, okay, right, do, do the question, do the questions and the answers, and, uh, if, 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 if I think that it's either too hard or ungettable because it's stupid, we're binning it. Right. I thought we'd already been, I'm annoyed that- Right, come on, do, 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 what was the, do, do it quickly. Uh, the first one was, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. Right, what's the answer? That was B. What's the answer? Buffed head. Right, that works, all Busted, right. that's fair enough. Did anyone get that? I assume no. some people got- No. People have given up, Rick. People aren't even bothering to contribute. Right, what's the next one? They've just ignored it like it never happened. Uh, Busted. Second Busted. one. Busted. Um. Busted. Wh why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Go that on. Was, that was DS. Yeah. Uh, 70s band, Detroit Spinners. <laughs> The Detroit Spinners have become the Detroit Spinners. Yeah. Okay. Um. Brilliant. And then the final bit, I'll play you some effects. They Let's hear this. Let's hear this. <laughs> it's terrifying, Carl. <laughs> it's sinister. <gasps> well, what's happened there? What, what was happening? What no, 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 what's the answer? That was, uh, Born Slippy. She, the woman was having a baby, the doctor tried to grab it, it fell onto the floor. <laughs> That's in your head, Carl. That's just a load of screams. That's and noise. in your head. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I, do you know what? I haven't even got onto Warren Slippy. I'm still on the <laughs> Trout Spinners. Well, let's put a song. That's it. I, I don't. I, I don't know what to say. Steve, a song for the. A song for the ladies, surely. Uh, Did anyone with, get any of those? Let's end with Nick Drake and the beautiful River Man, and we'll see you next week, and hopefully Bob Robusters Slippy will be trout spinners. ditched. Detroit Spinners. Well, don't keep saying it. <laughs> we say it like that. Well, don't.